Before we proceed to the main material, I would like to remind you that this video was split in three parts, and currently you are watching the part number two. The video itself was too long, so we decided that that would be better to cover different aspects of mobile development in different episodes. So don't forget to subscribe, and let's proceed to the video number two. So, we have finally completed the ideation process, we made some researches, and we are totally sure that our application is going to be great, it's going to be a uh, consumer of the part of the market, or it will face the demanded market of the customers. Well, congratulations, you have done the first step, now the easiest part is to develop the app. Of course, I'm kidding, it's not that easy, but technically, nowadays, we have quite a lot of different ways on how this can be sped up and how you can simplify this approach. Basically, the way how it was done the old-fashioned way before the AI and no coding tools, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, was approximately like this. So you start with building a dev team. You go on the freelance market or you go on the hiring market, you're hiring these people, you're paying them salary, you are trying to control the process. That's especially hard if you have no technical expertise at all, you have to trust them and what they do. Then you basically, and usually you do this simultaneously, but again, that depends on whether you have the technical experience or not, but you've been preparing the technical task, basically the way where you explain how your application should work. And for lots of founders, that was the hardest part, especially those who never created the mobile apps. Just because basically, if you've never worked with developers, you don't really know how to explain the task to them. And that's exactly the same thing here. So by this moment, you are paying, already paying a lot of money for either somebody to develop your tech task, or maybe you're overpaying your developers because you do not know how to explain the proper task in the proper way. So you have already spent a lot of money. The next step is you have some simple minimal viable prototype. They have already passed it to you. You have it installed on your device. And now you start testing. And unfortunately, the problem here is that quite usually uh, the initial version or MVP, especially again, if you don't have the technical expertise, it's not really what you're looking for or what you're expecting to receive. And next, you have several different iterations with your dev team where you're trying to improve, where you're trying to make it better. And it's quite important here to make sure that your customers and not only you are going to be satisfied because at some point your eye gets blurry about your app and you might not recognize that, for example, the app customers are going to be falling off from the specific screen just because it's not clear to them how to use the app or something like this. So at this point, it's good practice to have the focus group or at least several friends or relatives who are going to be helping you test the application but the best approach here is again to for example purchase several amazon gift cards or just build a focus group of people who will provide you their feedback and this feedback is going to be objective enough so again you are still paying a lot of money here and hopefully if you are still at this stage and you have not run out of money you have not lost your dev team and you are still have not lost face in your app as well well that's where you can try publishing the application that was the way how it worked in the old fashion, or before the AI and no-code tools appear. Now I have some good news for you, and this is why I basically started this video, is because anybody nowadays can develop the mobile app quite easily. Of course, that's still gonna be a little bit time consuming and you'll need some capacity, but in fact, that's gonna be a little bit easier for you just because you don't need to hire the whole development team, you can have just one person or even potentially you can do this on your own if you are ready to invest your time. So the magic thing I'm talking about here is the zero coding. Basically, that's always been a war between the quality and speed of the development, but here we're trying to keep the balance with the zero code tools. The idea of here of the zero code or no code is that technically you still have some code in the background or in the back end, but as the developer or as the person creating the app, you are using the tool that is more of a builder, like just a build of several different blocks, etc. And you don't really need to write a single line of code. Several things to consider here about no code, I have a specific slide for it is that first of all, yes, no code is a simplified building way, but it is not a developer's or development replacement. You still have to make sure that you are producing the uh, proper code and that the backend generates it correctly, uh, that you are connecting to the proper databases, that you are storing your data, etc. So again, if you have no technical uh, knowledge or no technical basis, that might be a little bit hard. Obviously, it's going to be simpler, but at this point, I would still recommend hiring the no-code expert 
uh, usually these are the people who have been working on the mobile app development before they do have some programming experience and now they are just uh, simplifying and speeding up their productivity using the zero code tools Another thing is that Snow Code is the perfect way to test hypotheses. You can build a minimal viable product with it, but it is not a final product yet. So the main reason here is because the zero coding tools are pretty limited with their functionality. Yes, you can build some simple application, you can even build a more complicated one. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples later of the apps that made literally millions of dollars via the zero code tools. But you gotta remember that at this point you have to compromise about what you are building and what the features you wanna include. Because sometimes, unfortunately, the no coding tools will not allow you to have that much functionality as you would like to. Uh, in comparison with the regular development process. To be honest, there are quite a lot of different no-coding tools over the last several years and more and more keep emerging. I have four most popular here. So Bubble, I think they were the pioneers on the market and they've been creating the first zero coding tool at all. And at the very beginning, they were not even aiming at the mobile apps. They've been building these for the simplified website development, some web services, uh, software as a service products, etc. Then they made some adjustments and allowed people to create the mobile apps as well. Adalo. Adalo is quite a fancy thing and you can take a look at my challenge I'm currently completed somewhere here or here where I am building the mobile app in 30 days using Adalo only. This is quite a fancy tool and they are currently running the version number 2 of it which allows you basically to connect several different APIs and define the logic in a really simple way. Again, that's the place where you have to compromise with the functionality and features, but overall that works perfectly and allows you to create some simple minimal viable products and even monetize them right away. And also the product is quite cheap and this is not an advertisement by the way. Flutterflow. Uh, technically the story behind Flutterflow is pretty interesting here because to start with, Flutter is the programming language initially designed by Google. That was their, I would say, third attempt to create a programming language specifically for developing the mobile apps, at the same time to make it cross-platform. And then a team of enthusiasts who started using this language to develop their mobile apps decided that they would like to simplify the front-end creation process. In the end, they created a pretty solid and powerful no-coding tool. I would say that it will take you quite a lot of time to find out how to work with that, understand all the aspects and principles, and it's not gonna be that fast for you. But for example, if you're a developer and you wanna just speed up the process or you're like a one-man army who's trying to do everything, including coding as well, Flutterflow is your way to go just because you're going to be able to develop the perfect product and I would say that you will have the most access to any customization. And the last one is Buzzy. Buzzy is quite a new player on the market, but I personally really like this product because first of all, you don't even need to do any drag and drop or building blocks process here. The whole Buzzy application is basically consists of two different parts. The first one is the input where you are entering AI prompts and the second one is the Figma plugin. So as for the input, you are just entering some details about how you would like your app to look. For example, I want to build a data storage application for the local city library or something like that. I'm entering all these details into the input, I click the button submit, and AI and their internal backend device basically builds the whole project for me. At the same time, you, for example, if you have the Figma design and you have already developed the ideation process and got the design ready, you can connect the Figma plugin and it works approximately in the same way as the AI input, but basically you just assign different components up to your Figma elements, then you click several magic buttons and again you get the working app. Honestly, it is still, I would say, in the early beta version because it's really hard to make things work properly from the very first time, but that allows you to create a simple mobile application, again, to test things out from the very beginning. I'm currently still following the process of how the product is being developed and uh, what their success is, but I would say that it works pretty finely and I hope that Buzzy team is going to be keeping their development process straightforward and helping improve the product quite easily. 
Here are a couple of examples I promised to show you of different applications that's been created via the no coding tools. Again, I would like to emphasize here that when you're using no coding, this is just the first stage. For example, you're trying to get the investment or you're trying to validate your idea. At one point, you are still end up with the need to recreate your product and rebuild it with the real programming language. But for the very beginning, again, when you are a one-man army or you have a small team of people, for example, you're drive driven, driven by the enthusiasm, well, technically, that's something you can easily do and use. So here, for example, we have one of the applications for the uh, medical assumptions and medical events. So let's say you're coming to the hospital and you need to see the doctor. Well, technically, you can do this in advance. Another thing which is pretty good about this one is that this has been launched all over the North America to help people get their online appointments instead of going to the emergency or hospital. And as far as I know, these guys have raised some money as well, which works pretty well. Another fancy thing here is called USA that's been launched, if I'm not mistaken, in 2021. And the idea here was that you can video chat with a home repair expert instead of inviting this person to your homes. So, for example, you have your kitchen sink broken, you don't want anybody to come, or again, we had COVID, we didn't want really anybody to come into our houses. So you are just setting up the video chat with the expert, they tell you what to do, how to fix that, you are doing this online, you pay them money, but this all is being managed via one SAS platform. Which is pretty cool, these guys got some investment, you can read about their story right now, but they are keep expanding their product, and currently they are becoming something like the task rabbit of the new generation. So really cool product, and the fact is that they built the initial version in one month, or maybe one half month, is specifically ineligible here. Yeah.